warned you not to. Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of. He came for the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but. Oh, oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I don't think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Killer Frequency. Uh, so if you're just tuning in, Murphy, who had called earlier in the night to wish his son a happy birthday, taunted the killer as well. And now... He's stuck in a predicament where we have to figure out who's the best person to send to come and get him, given that the fire station's tires for their truck has been slashed, and there's only one. Kind of like there's only three sheriffs. <laughs> there's only three cops for the sheriff's department. So consulting our board here, we have four potential people. Um, but there's a caveat that McCready Street is closed, so we won't be able to use that connecting street um, to get people up to where um, Murphy is trapped in the uh, waste management. There's also, you know, some of these uh, people are probably not best suited for the job like she told us that there was somebody who was um very old and they lived in the town close by but that's probably not a good option and so we only really have like two and i think i think we've narrowed it down to either catherine or Alex, but I think Catherine is probably the best choice in this case. All right, well, let's get into it. Hopefully we can save Murphy and hopefully we can find out why these ki this killer is stalking the town. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Catherine. All right, give me a second. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Call coming in. It's Catherine. She and Murphy are now both on the line. Hello, Catherine. Are you there? What, uh, what, what's happening at the plant? The whole damn thing is up in smoke. I... God damn it. I'm going in. <gasps> oh, my reception is terrible in here. God, my eyes stink.
Murphy, can you see anything at all? Yeah. I got a little flashlight. Looks like old cans, bottles, and newspaper. What does it say on the newspaper? It's uh, the Henderson headline. Murphy, tell me what you can smell. What do you think, genius? I told you earlier. Fire! I smell fire! This isn't helping? Go to recycling. Recycling. Got it. Come on, Catherine. Murphy, do you know what part of the plant you're in? I'm in a dumpster, man! What do you want from me? <laughs> do you hear anything, Murphy? I hear my heart about to pound out of my chest! Put the receiver up to the lid. Go to the crusher. Okay, it's super loud. We're almost out of time. There are three dumpsters here. One for Gallows Creek Council, Henderson Disposal, and Quiet Ridge Municipal. Open the Henderson container. You just get home to your son, okay? Will do, Forrest. Well, folks, Gallows Creek has two folk heroes tonight, Murphy and Catherine. I'm sure their deeds won't soon be forgotten. Great job, Forrest. No time to celebrate, though. We got a caller. You know what to do. All right, folks. Another of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for taking a swing for Gallows Creek. Jackass. I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. 
That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Linda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Ugh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, of course he's one of those guys. Yep, he played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. Caller on line one. I suppose I should take this call. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Uh, hello, caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. I can see him from up here. God damn it. She's just a kid. Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my god. Oh my god. Stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? <sighs> Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. I'm at the end of a hall. 
There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Go to the closet. Okay, I'll... Okay, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> oh, who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke, jeez. Wait, isn't that... Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. Jimmy, everyone, it's really not safe to be out. Please, go home. And waste whistling night? <laughs> no way. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, I'm hit! Everyone, get inside! Everyone, run! You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna get. Who is with you, Carrie? My friend. We drove out to the old murder house, and... Oh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, Jimmy. Friendship quiz. This might work. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. If only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in. Force, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh. What? Scott, you're not any good at. And. No, no, Chad. Out of all of us, you're not the one to. Oh. Everything okay? No. We. Uh, we're figuring out a plan, but everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. I think you'll have to be the tiebreaker. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Ugh. Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Ugh. These damn kids never learn. Breathe, Peggy. It's okay. Ugh. They do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks, we're going to work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here. 
An intern? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you know? Not sure why we took on an intern. We really didn't have the office space for one. Poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. All right, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. I'm talking a little bit more because we have some dead air and I just want to kind of talk about our radio host. Like, it's it's obvious that Peggy um, grew, it's, you know, she grew up here as we learned. She grew up here, she's lived here for majority of life. She's not, as far as we know, has not lived anywhere else. She's pretty much just, you know, gone on vacation to different places, but's never lived anywhere. And Nash is like, I came from like Chicago. I've came from like a large metropolis city where I'm used to having like tons of people listen to me every day. And now I'm down to only 35 people in a thousand, in a thousand people town. And, uh, you know, it makes you wonder why he's here though, because you know, he, he alludes to the fact that he got blacklisted. But it's like, what did he get blacklisted for doing? Did he piss off, like, the the Coalition for Radio Broadcasting by saying something he wasn't supposed to say? Um, which is actually, like, a thing. Like, back in, like, the 80s, 70s, and 60s, when radio was the more prominent... Um, way of people hearing about news and stuff like that there were very strict rules that you couldn't say specific things on radio or like you would essentially get your station either banned from broadcasting in specific sectors or um the radio host would be fine and it could be that he said or did something that was not okay in terms of like radio and that ended up with him being essentially like fired and sent to like a nowhere town like you can't work in like major metropolis you have to work your way up again and uh you know but it's never really explicitly said which is I think kind of leaves it up to interpretation, so that's my interpretation, but I don't know if that's, like, the case. Being of basically like being from a large radio station, it's also uh, he's noticed that the protocol for records is very much like willy nilly. Like, it's there may as well be no protocol. And, you know, I thought it was funny that they commented on it because Peggy literally was like, one of the other news, uh, one of the other radio station workers was playing a song and I, well, all the time because he knew that I didn't like it, so I just threw it out the window. And I think in where Nash is from, they probably would have been like, um, that's like either, you know, like a write up and they would get in trouble or a fireable offense if she broke the record and they were contractually obligated to um, play the song on the radio. But I like that he's kind of pointing out the differences and the reactions are realistic to the fact that, you know, where he's from, they he'd never had to worry about doing like 
911 operation. Like, maybe a news broadcast, but nothing like here where the 911 operator is just like, hey, I gotta go out of town. You're the only one with radio experience. And, um, I will be back in like four hours. And the reaction is either like, yeah, sure, okay. And then like, what? And then the last one is just like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Carrie's on line one, whenever you're ready. This is Forrest Nash, back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather, he picked you. Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then is part four. This is a very detailed plan. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. It's weirdly easier to think when you're about to die. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four, we need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between... Who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. <laughs> yeah, you are. You spend a lot of time running shirtless. You got this, Hot David. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid. Part five, we trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable point? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be... Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do.
Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and then it's go time. Sounds good. Talk to you in a sec. Good luck, Carrie. That actually sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. Good luck. And Godspeed. You got this. Here we go, everyone. Slaughter, to the roof. Go, Heather. She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go! Carrie, you need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got God. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. All right, wait, get into position. Everybody else, hide. Okay, performer. Now, act like your life depends on it. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. Let me go. Let me go. Let go. Just drive. Oh, my God. You're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? I can make it home. Thank you both for helping. If you hadn't, I... It was your plan, Carrie. And it was a great plan. You get home now, Carrie. Before he changes his mind. Right. 
I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Hey, Big Shot, hit the button and take the call. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest, I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink, trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was this one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now, whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Aw, oh. oh. oh, hello, Max. Oh. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Max can skate? Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. Maxie sounds like a really special boy. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a little. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. You got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. You're gonna love this next track. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, th that's what I meant. 
You were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though we lost Jimmy, and I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't... Why am I... Why what, Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... Why let me go? Maybe he only wanted to hurt the pranksters. I... Maybe. Did he just think everyone was making fun of him? Did he always hate these hazing rituals? I, I mean, if he did, why wait all these years to... Why do this now? These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Hey, great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh, no. We're out of beer. What am I going to do? The party is going to be over. Fear not. A grilling spree will give you a free six-pack of beer if Dallas High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six-pack of beer if Gallus High wins. A free six-pack? Righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Gallus High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we <laughs> murder them. <laughs> me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grilling Spring. I'll call off 555-749-8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for.
Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or... Scratch that, Forrest. We have a caller. The lines lit up. I need to take the call. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful, those poor kids. Still, I'm, I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your name was Dawn, right? What, Peggy? Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? You must really love that song, if you're calling up to ask for it when you know we don't have it. Well, I, I do love it. And I don't want to argue, but you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's... Something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest? Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's going to be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. <sighs> well, folks, here's some music for you while I think things over. It's funky, it's groovy, it's Stab in the Twilight by Knife and Easy. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about- I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth- I don't care. I don't want to go out there. Forrest, someone might be in danger. And despite your being so damn curmudgeonly, I think you... Stop it, Peggy. Just... I'll go. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh... You know, I never thought about it, but... Yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Screen, with me, Peggy. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open alone.
I wonder why there's so many fuses just kind of scattered about this alleyway. Like, it kind of seems weird that they're out here. Because, wouldn't you have, like, fuses in a central location? These just kind of feel like somebody went through and just was like, here's a fuse, here's a fuse, and here's a fuse. Maybe it's just kind of like to draw them away, you know, to draw Nash away so that it kind of wastes his time a little bit. window would she have thrown it out of? Definitely not going to comment on um, what we just saw. So <laughs> how's everybody's day going? So these fuses are completely and totally burnt out, which makes me think that it was done intentionally because there's so much water everywhere. And it just, even within the building, there's water everywhere. And it's kind of like, was it intentional by the person that we just saw? Or was it like, oh, it was just their time because the the radio station is really really old and so like you know it obviously hasn't been like fixed or anything like that uh, or maintenance besides like clive probably doing stuff um in like ages here it is long ride home Of course, it locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A, a door, elevator, or something. And that's broken too. Only the best for KFAM. Let's see if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. I should check the fuse box. So the potentiality of the killer being able to get in once we fix the fuse box is like at 75%. I say that because more than likely these fuse boxes are going to allow us to get in through the service elevator because that's the only other access door. And usually service elevators have like buttons and mechanics that would allow us to, you know, kind of press it and it would open. And right now the button doesn't work so i say it's 75 percent it could just open up like a different area like that beginning area we were walking through the alleyway and uh there's a door at the end it could unlock that but you know it could also just be the service elevator
since we're coming to the end of the video, I just want to go ahead and say thank you so much for joining us. I'm enjoying the game so far. Um, I did do a little bit more talking in this one than the other two episodes. And that's just because, you know, with this episode, um, we have a lot more dead air because we're essentially solving, like, puzzles and looking and consulting things whereas with the other ones it was like we were talking to peggy we're talking to the radio to the radio callers you know and just going from there so yeah i'm probably gonna do a little bit more talking in the next video but we'll just have to see so anyway Thank you so much again for joining us, and we will see you in the next one. Bye. It's like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses.